Good morning, friends. It's Julie, and today I want to tell you about something that I just started to do, and I am mailing out today, right here, and why I think this is the future of postcards, because we talk about in, re in postcard reselling that some postcard collectors are dying out. We need the young people to get, get involved. So how do we do that, and how to get rid of those chromes <laughs> and those postcards that we're not so thrilled about? Tune in and I will tell you what I'm doing. What I found was something that when I was searching for lots on eBay, I would come across this term and it sounded interesting. There must be something people do with junk postcards, modern postcards, I was thinking. And there was these big lots. They would be mostly continental in or chrome, newer stuff. And then a lot of people are selling new postcards or things that they designed. And they would be the continental sides. And those are the postcards that don't sell resell for very well right now. So the term I found was post crossy. And I looked up the web I looked it up online and it there is a website and there are people who do it off the website. But basically it is a site where you send postcards to each other. You sign up and you send out I can send 5 at a time right. I can have 5 going right now. And so these are my 5 they have codes on them. So they give you a code and so you write it on the postcard and address it to somebody around the world or it could be in the US or your own country. And then when they get it, they go to the website and they enter the code and let them know that you received it. So then you can send out another postcard and then uh, and so on and you can keep increasing how many postcards. But there's there's a whole, whole bunch of information on how to do it. But basically you send postcards to each other and it's a lot of young people getting involved in this and they, um, um, you know, to have, they, they miss those days where we used to write letters. When I was a kid, I wrote letters to my cousin and friends who had moved away because um, my parents wouldn't always let me take tie up the phone because we only had one phone line, no call waiting. It was all analog. Um, we even had an old dial phone when I was really little. So anyways, um, we didn't have the internet to do emails and we didn't do texting, of course, or any of that. Um, it was all analog. That younger generation misses out on the joy of receiving a postcard in the mail or a letter, something addressed just to them. And it's just a little bit of just kind of a little fun thing, little bits of joy in your day. So it's anticipatory because then you're like looking forward to going to the mailbox instead of going, what bills did I get today? What kind of junk mail did I get? But instead, you might go there and get you know, a postcard of a dog, if you like dogs. Hopefully that's good. So <clears throat> I think this is a really good thing because there are a lot of people who are collecting postcards now, sending them back and forth. Like remember the golden era, um, maybe not as big as the golden era. But um, let me get something for you. This postcard scene of being able to send postcards internationally so you can f um, have learn a little bit about other people, other places, is really goes back to the wh reason why postcards were started in the first place. I have this book, The American Postcard Collector's Guide. Um, fairly cheap book. It's really... Um, I got it, I think, at an end store. But one of the things it says in chapter one is that about 1810, this man called Elihu Burritt, he wanted men to help uh, better understand each other. And his belief was that if all nations could communicate with each other by the um, establishment of a cheap postal system, the chances of world peace would become more secure. Now we are 200 years later. Is our world a little more peaceful in some ways? In some ways, you know, not. Uh, depends on where you're coming from. He started the process of trying to get um, a universal cheap postage, and they finally did it in 1879. So once it caught on um, to go internationally, America and Britain, UK, were really good at sending postcards to each other. So you might find a lot of UK postcards in old collections, and there might be a lot of US postcards across the pond as well. And it says here on page 10 that the picture postcard had proved itself to be a triumph in the realm of early international communication. Like the touch of a friendly hand in greeting, postcards with their simple messages fluttered through the private mailboxes to cement many an understanding between strangers which were to ripen into friendships to last a lifetime. 
All right, so basically postcards were invented to share our lives with each other and to create, to get to know each other, basically. So if we got to know somebody in England, we were less likely to want to, like, go to war with them, right? And it's also to form friendships, to bring the world closer together. And I think this is exactly what Postcard Crossing can do. Um, you can sign up to have all international. Okay, so one thing about it is that you don't get to pick who you're sending to. They give you, when you say, I'm going to send a postcard, they will give you a random address to send to. And then you have to send it to that person, um, no matter, you know, what. I, I don't think there's a way to say no. I don't think, I don't know if there's a way to skip and say, no, I don't really want to send that one. So in a way, it's not kind of like a pen pal list where, I don't know if you remember those pen pal lists where you'd have a list of people you could see who we have in common and send something to. This is not that way. It's just, um, here's your address. You send a postcard. This person that I'm sending this postcard to, this is from a Montana photographer. She likes um, different to learn about different things, so I gave her a picture of a ghost town in Montana. I told her a little bit about that. <clears throat> this person said they like dogs, or she had a really cute story about dogs and her adoption story. And so I found a vintage one that I hope she'll like. Um, I'm new to this. This person said that they liked that she liked kind of the. Um, was it paranormal or some other stuff? It's just a picture of night and another photographer one. I, I got a pack of these at an, um, a craft sale this summer. It was not the one I took you to. And it, it's just kind of cool. And my moon's seeing, seeing this is going out to a lady with her 92 year old grandmother or not grand 92 year old mother who does gardening. So I thought they would like a picture of Montana, um, lavender by a photographer. So anyways, uh, because I have such a stack of postcards, it's easy for me to grab something that they might like. Now, you notice that if I listed one of these kinds of postcards for sale, um, they probably would not sell very well because they're very modern and they're easy to get. You might as well just get it from somebody um, new, and especially if they have writing on them. But as blank ones, you know, they're not as valuable as something like, okay, let me see what I got here. Just for example, I don't know how valuable this one is yet, but here is a an antique postcard. This one is a street view. You can see that. Of um, Indianapolis, Indiana, and it is an undivided back, so it is a very old postcard um, put, on, put out by Rochester News. It doesn't really mean a lot, I don't think. But this one, I might be able to sell, you know, between, depending on how rare it is, between about $4 to 40 depending. Maybe if there's no other card like this and this is a really collectible town, maybe I could even get $100, who knows? So, um, but putting something thick like this up there, a new Chrome postcard, because you can see that um, this, is, this is a standard size postcard and this is a Chrome, there is a size difference. A lot of the traditional postcard collectors don't really like the Chromes because they're newer and they don't fit so well in their collection box boxes either because if you have a box of cards that are this size and then you get a bunch like this size they're not going to fit your sleeves and such there's a, a couple reasons why chromes are not as desirable they're just not old enough to maybe in 20 years these kind of postcards are going to be what people want to collect because there are so many new artists coming up with their own thing i mean this is a montana photographer maybe maybe or, or not you know, 20, 30 years from now, somebody will see this with a Montana postmark um, and a the artist's name and say, oh yeah, I collect those. And they're very rare because hardly anyone sent them. You know, who knows that these might be the postcards of tomorrow. Plus it helps to get the interest of the younger crowd. So one of the things that I see a lot of the postcrossing younger crowd do is they decorate the back of the postcard. So what I did on this one is I put a strip of washi tape down here because it didn't have the postcard back on it. So, and some people will put stickers on it and do you know, all kinds of things to personalize it. Kind of like the way we decorated journals. If you're back in my journaling days, um, if you remember seeing all of the um, 
washi tape and stickers and such. Um, the, it's just, and you can do stamping, whatever. You can just make a whole scene if you want. It kind of fits in a lot with uh, us who do like paper crafting and the ephemera, um, especially as postcard sellers. I think this is a great way to distribute those postcards that we don't know what to do with. <laughs> The we get a box of crumbs and yeah I think sending a vintage card is okay if that's what the people like. Um, there in the profile um, so far of what I've seen is they give you a list of things that they like and really you don't have to go buy those you can just send out what you want. That's what I did with this guy. He said he lived near um, New York so I sent him a vintage postcard of um, this vintage postcard. It was unposted so. Um, now it's going to be used because there are so many postcards of this scene that they're not worth anything to a postcard reseller But to somebody who might want to see that I mean, maybe the skyline has changed for them um, If they're just they're used to modern cards, then it might be kind of nice to see one of these so I have actually sorted through my postcards um, over the weekend on Sundays, I don't really post much online because it's. I think I need a, to take a day off. Even though I want to post postcards, I need mentally to, to take a break and do something else. But anyway, so this is my, <laughs> my project. But I, I um, went through my boxes and I, and I took out the easy, the low-hanging fruit, which I know that, the, yeah, these are not the ones that I really want to list because they're really not going to garner me much. So I have some categories in here. And I do have a little category in front of junk postcards, which are things that I won't use in postcrossing. Maybe they're already um, written on or not in good shape. And I don't want to sell it in my booth, so they're just junk. Like, some of these are really lovely, but like this one, it's got... Oh, that actually isn't too bad. Maybe I should sell that one. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, oh, okay, where's my bad ones? Oh, here we go. So here's a really lovely birthday card, but you can see here that there is uh, a part ripped out. So what I'm doing is using these ones that are still kind of interesting, and I'm using them as um, my packing, <clears throat> an extra packing postcard in my sellable, when, when I sell something. So I've got, here is my are my post-crossy postcards, and then in the back, these are the ones that I'm gonna put in my shop booth, which I think, um, either I don't think they're appropriate for post-crossing, um, and I think I can still sell it. So, yeah. Like, there's, I have got a whole bunch of these Native American ones, and they might not go over well mailing them to somebody. So, I don't see them as being something that is very valuable to list either. I'm going to keep you updated on how this works. I have been watching a few post-crossing videos online. I can start... You start out and you can send five out and once these five are registered, I can send out more. I don't know how long it will be until I get postcards back. Um, I it may have to wait until they actually, one of them actually gets there. Today is Monday, October, excuse me, 22nd, the week of Thanksgiving. So there will be a, probably a one day of mail delay in here too for the U.S. There is one in the U.S., of course, this one, the New York guy. So anyways, that's what I'm going to try out and see how it goes. I think it's going to be like a fun thing. And I, um, I, you know, you get so much postcards because I buy large lots and hundreds, maybe a thousand. I do have a, a box of a thousand that's coming to me. Um, I might do a, an unboxing. It's not an exciting box, but there's, you never know. I like the seller. Sometimes you get a lot of cards you don't know what to do with, and this is one way to do it. So hope you enjoy that. I will list below or link below the l website and let me know if you what you think. Are you going to sign up for it? It might be kind of something fun to do in the winter when you can't get out as much. Um, you know, some places are closed down or semi-closed down with the pandemic. Maybe you just do this and send it to friends and relatives. I mean, you don't have to do an official website, but it's kind of nice to have the um, little connection internationally. So we'll see how it goes and if I like it and if I continue. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a joyful day. Goodbye.